عليكم ورحمة الله. Look at the beer. The section is a lot like teeth on the Cape Flats. There's gaps right here in the middle of the... And I notice also, Uncle, there's white people here also. Usually when there's so many Indians, the white folks, they're hiding. Shh. Don't make eye contact. They may try and sell us something. Are these questions too difficult? <laughs> What's your name, Uncle? Yasin. Okay, mashallah. Uncle, what I want you to do, just to inject some enthusiasm into the crowd, okay? When I go like this, I want you to stand up on your chair, rub your shirt off, <laughs> and then go, Whoa! But remember, this is a Muslim show, so when you rub your shirt off from the navel upwards, <laughs> okay, this is and then you go, oh, and hopefully that'll cause a ripple effect, sending a cascade of enthusiasm across the room from person to person until everyone in here is filled with joy and happiness. Do we want him to do this, people? Yeah. You're a superstar, brother. Let's go. Oh. It's going no. Thanks for that. You know, I, I appreciate the applause that I got, you know, just once. I'd love to get applause like my diva gets, you know, because people love my diva on his birthday. Everyone was wishing my diva a happy birthday. I was even watching Yo! TV, which is a kid's television program. And they were like, okay, guys, it's Madiba's birthday today. So we want to wish Madiba a very happy birthday from all of us here at Yo! TV. Okay. And I'm like, who is that message for? I mean, surely they don't think my diva is going, Grasha, where is the remote? <laughs> it's time for Teletubbies. <laughs> but I actually went to the Nelson Mandela Cup rugby match at Ellis Park, where we thrashed Australia, and I have never, ever been to the rugby before, people. And it was very scary for me, very scary, because I've never, ever seen such huge... White folks in my life. I mean, sitting next to me, legs as thick as me. Blonde hair coming out of every orifice. They were breathing. And the husband was even worse. And I was watching this game, and I was seeing the white people kill each other on the field. And I was thinking to myself, that's why you really see an Indian rugby player. <laughs> We're not that stupid. <laughs> I think the only time you're going to see an Indian with a rugby ball, he's putting a price on it. <laughs> that's it, people. <laughs> We like sports. We do like sports. But, you know, not really sports where people sweat. We love cricket. Love cricket. You know why? Because cricket is a sport where there's a rule. If you don't want to run, <laughs> you can get someone else to run for you. No, I don't want to run. I just want to hit. I will hit. You run. You run. Okay, go. Hey, okay, not so fast. I bet on the other team. <laughs> I always wondered, you know, what uh, the batsmen talk about in between overs. I always wondered that, you know. What they do is they take off their helmets and they walk to the center of the pitch and they go... <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, what is Hashim Amla saying to Graham Smith? <laughs> Listen, brother, it's the intention that's the most important thing. <laughs> I'm not saying you must go on 40 days immediately, but there's the istima in Brits next week, inshallah, you can make intention to give da'wah. Just write your name here, no obligation, no obligation. <laughs> also, you know, Indian people, we very, very influenced, like many cultures, by Western culture. Like a lot of Indian people have English names, 
They'll go, yeah, my name is Jacob, <laughs> but my friends call me Jakes. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day when English people do that. Yes, my name is Jack, but my friends call me Abdul Haq. <laughs> Also, we don't like our accents, like Indian people from South Africa can go to the UK for a very short time, and then they come back with an accent. <laughs> I'm like, hey, hey, Mohammed, where you been? I was in the UK, Riyadh. <laughs> so nice to be back home in Gatesville, mate. But are you amazing? How long were you gone, brother? Two weeks. <laughs> no. uh, it's the best two weeks of mine. I wait for the day when an English person goes to Pakistan <laughs> and then comes back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This was the best vacation I ever had. <laughs> I don't like the French in the accents. You know why? Because the French can make the worst Cape Flats term sound like a perfume. <laughs> and like, oh my God, that's the lovely scent you're wearing. What is it? Joma se poes. Some of the aunties explaining that joke to each other. At that <laughs> you know that the French never supported the Americans during the Iraq War. So some Americans wanted to change the name of French fries to Freedom Fries. They wanted to change the name of French Fries to Freedom Fries. Crazy. I think that's a bit much. I mean, during apartheid, we never called Buravo Struggle Wars. I mean. <laughs> you never kill off Struggle Wars, Kanala. <laughs> Amata. <laughs> but also, we don't realize how much propaganda actually affected how we saw things. Because I was always taught, like everyone here, that Jan van Riebeek discovered the Cape. <laughs> now, how can you say you discovered a place when there was people already living there? I mean, if I'm in a house and you knock on my door, are you a house discoverer? <laughs> no, you are Jehovah's Witness. Can you... <laughs> Waiting for the Jamaat brothers, come on. <laughs> but it's good, you know. We've got many problems in South Africa, but we must maintain our positivity. It's very important. You know, we can all vote now. Hmm? Who did you vote for in the last elections, Yasin? <laughs> Says ANC, that's good, you know? If you ask a white person, then no, I don't want to help. <laughs> I don't tell you. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, people are very secretive about who they voted for. Very secretive. And as a medical doctor, I'm usually used to people telling me anything. I can even go, um, do you have piles? Yes. <laughs> Would you like to see? Like, who did you vote for? Ah, oh, don't get personal, you. Yeah. <laughs> Thought you wanted to see my piles. <laughs> but you see, there's a lot of voter apathy amongst young people. Young people don't want to vote. The only thing that young people want to vote for is pop idols. <laughs> so that's why I say the government must get their own idol show. <laughs> so we don't love to see Tony Leon come out there. Learn little, I'm so learn little, I have no battle. Or you could write Jacob Zuma and Shabir Sheikh doing a duet. <laughs> Ebony. <laughs> and Briani. <laughs> but I think my favorite would have to be Deputy President from Zilem Lambo Nuka. Come here, then. <clears throat> I believe I can fly. <laughs> Fly a state jet to Dubai. Gonna party every night and day. People's tax will pay my way. <laughs> and what about Mantu Shabalalam Simang? As I do it. Yeah. They try to make me go to rehab. <laughs> I said no. Do you think that was a bit cheap, ma'am? Do you think that was a bad, bad taste joke? You don't think so? <coughs> well, you know, 
I don't actually like what the Sunday Times did to Mantusha Balaram Simang, where they exposed the medical records on the front page. I don't think she's a particularly good health minister, but everyone deserves dignity, right? The only problem that I have with Mantusha Balaram Simang is that she was the minister of health and she had poor health. <laughs> That's like seeing the minister of transport hitchhiking or something. <laughs> Oh, where's the Minister of Home Affairs? She got deported. <laughs> I mean, would you trust a dentist? Don't worry, in good hands. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> but I wanted to replace the health minister, but I was taking too long, because she's sick all the time. I mean, she had a liver transplant, then she had a shoulder up. It seems they were replacing her. It was just one part at the time. <laughs> And also, people took this whole thing too seriously. You know, a lot of people, you know, the Minister of Health had poor health, and that'll cause negative investment in the country. <laughs> well, people overseas don't know anything about Mantu Shabal Alam Simang. You could ask him, have you heard about Mantu Shabal Alam Simang from South Africa? No, is it contagious? <laughs> uh, I've heard of TB and malaria, but not Manto. Should I get a vaccine or something? I don't know. But New South Africa, at least we don't have to deal with a pencil test anymore. Let me tell you, during apartheid, during the classification process, sometimes they used to get confused between who was actually white and who was just light-skinned colored. So they took a pencil, stuck it in the person's hair. If it fell out of the hair, the person was white. And if it stayed in the hair, the person was colored. Surely no mistakes were ever made using a test of such inspired genius. <laughs> I think that'll actually make a cool ad. Brain out running out of home of his biddle biddle. They say I'm a whitey. It's like new sun silk hair relaxer. <laughs> also, you know, times have changed because I went to the movies recently called white people sitting in my seats. And I've never ever seen people so apologetic. Oh my God, are these your seats? I'm so sorry, it must be some sort of mistake. Stephen, I thought you said these were our seats. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I thought they were. I'm so sorry, Mr. Muslim man. Uh, please accept my wallet with our apologies. <laughs> Let's go, dear, don't look back. You could have a bomb, just keep on <laughs> And I'm from Cape Town, and we'd have a different approach. Like, oh, we're sitting in your seat. <laughs> Don't you want to sit over there, man? <laughs> you look comfortable here. <laughs> no, okay, I understand you, white. You like most moving people from where they're comfortable, no? <laughs> do a lot of traveling, do a lot of traveling. Traveling is very difficult for us, you know, we can all identify with it, you know? Because you know, a Muslim with a plane ticket. <laughs> it's like a South African politician with a travel voucher, it's a bit suspicious. Because <laughs> I was on this plane a couple of years back, you know, and I excited a prayer for good luck. Normal thing, you know, to protect me and my family on our journey. So I was like, Allah mashabna fi safrina wa khlufna fi <laughs> Within a minute, everyone else was praying as well. Because people take this whole militant Islamic extremist Hamas Taliban, you eat pork, therefore you die American dog thing. <laughs> a little too seriously. And I'm thinking if this discrimination against us were to continue, eventually they're gonna make us part of their in-flight safety demonstration. <laughs> they're like, please familiarize yourselves with the position of the Muslims on the flight. They will be further demarcated when we hand out the halal meals.
In the sudden event of a hijacking, little piglets will drop from the panel above them. <laughs> they should disable the hijacker, giving you time to escape. It's bad. Flight attendants, they come up to me. Coffee, tea. There are cameras all over the plane. <laughs> One time they actually handed me my lao meal and the lady next to me freaked out. Went, oh, that means it's a Muslim. <laughs> and I was like, listen, I don't appreciate your reaction over there. I mean, how do you think I feel? I mean, this is my last meal. Airplane security didn't find it that funny. <laughs> it actually turns out as part of the protocol for them to do internal examinations on us. You know, with the rubber glove and the finger and the KY jelly. I was freaking out, bro. I was going, this is not going to be pleasant. But then I got more freaked out because I thought, what if it is? <laughs> what if I'm like... <laughs> Uncle, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> but you know, there's so much negative Islamic propaganda on TV. It's so much. Whenever you think of a hijacker, you get like a picture of a Middle Eastern guy in your mind. Like you can't even imagine a Japanese hijacker. They're like, Arigato. <laughs> I'm taking control of this aircraft. <laughs> you, get over there. You, over there. Nobody move. Jesus. Good photo. <laughs> Blame ignorance for a lot of this also, you know? Like in the States, people don't know much about other cultures. I was in the US, and this dude was like, Hey man, you talk weird. Where y'all from? I'm like, uh, I'm from Cape Town. Cape Town. Where in Afghanistan is that? The Americans like fighting wars to maintain the peace. That's like making a porno to promote abstinence. <laughs> like, remember kids, if he really loves you, he'll wait. <laughs> you can't blame the Americans also. They don't have the brightest president in the world, let's be honest. I don't know if you remember George Bush during the Iraq war. He was like, <laughs> listen here, Saddam. I'm giving you 48 hours, man. That's three days to make a decision. <laughs> I am a medical doctor, that's my real job. I stayed for six years, I did my internship, community service. I have Indian family, now I'm telling jokes, they're very proud. <laughs> but I was crap being a doctor, especially after my, you know, studying and then doing my internship. You study for six years, in my internship, most of the time, I had to look at piles. All day. And my professors, they always described it like a bunch of grapes. Hang. It's disgusting. I mean, only a doctor can look at a pile and go, mmm, Hanapoot. <laughs> and my patients never understood me. I asked this guy the other day, sir, are you epileptic? Uh -uh. I'm from Mitchell's Play. But here's some advice to you guys, you know, if you're ever in Cape Town, don't ever use home remedies, you know? Because there's always people like my uncle, they're always mixing up something crazy. You get a bit of a headache, man, and they're like, okay, no? Take two enos, mix it with some Vicks Vapor Rub and Balls Chutney. Vicks Balls, roll it up in a roti, chow it, my boy, headache will disappear. But there's always a catchy, like, explosive diarrhea. I'm like, yeah, and then I ate this roti and it cleared my head right here. <laughs> People standing around there going, do you smell Vicks? Because my sinuses are suddenly clear. Also, please, guys, turn your cell phones off. What service provider do you use on your cell phone, brother? Hold a comp. Mm. 
don't know if you read this. I read this on the internet. They said, one of Vodacom's directors is endorsing the legalization of prostitution. Did you guys hear this? That got me thinking, what if Vodacom and the world's oldest profession merged? I mean, instead of pay as you go, you'll have pay as you come. Maaf, auntie, maaf, I didn't. And obviously the white guys would have to have per second billing. <laughs> the Indian people, where are you going, man? Three minutes, baby, three minutes. And if you're impotent, at least you have an excuse. I'm sorry, darling, but the reception is not very good. Eh? Yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> Any salsa users? You salsa users? It's cool. I'm a salsa user. Our salsa is crap. <laughs> but at least they got that emergency medical service. I mean, you could get shot. <laughs> 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 How come when if you phone a wrong number on a cell phone, how come most of the time it always sounds like it's the same brother that picks up? Hello? Good job. Good job. Hello? I think I got the wrong. Hello? 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 Good job. Hello? I think I got the wrong number. I think I got the wrong number. Oh, oh. Serious. Okay, sharp. Been all over the country. I've been all over the country doing my shows. Been to Cape Town, where I come from. And they're shooting a lot of Bollywood movies in Cape Town. A lot of Bollywood movies. And people are complaining that there's not enough local reference. They only use Hindi and English. I'm like, what do they want? A Bollywood movie with Cape Flats lingo. A lot of begging in Cape Town, like here, everywhere, and you can't give everyone, so people have certain defenses to begging. <laughs> First, you can stare ahead and look mean. <laughs> or you can do that little... <laughs> I don't have any money. Yeah, I know I'm driving an X5, but... Uh, <laughs> times are tough. And then sometimes people go crazy because they open up the onboard small change storage compartment, also known as the ashtray. <laughs> see, see, I tried. <laughs> went to Port Elizabeth, went to PE, to a place called Quantu Game Reserve. Have you guys heard about Quantu? It's owned by this Muslim family, the Jivas, and they're very wealthy, very wealthy. And they market this place as the first ever 100% Muslim game reserve. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean 100% Muslim game reserve? Are all the animals circumcised? <laughs> the lion only eat the buck after they see the halal certificate or something. <laughs> It's MJC. No. Also, you can't always take the German tourists out. They'll be like, <laughs> Excuse me, where are the animals? Um, it's Friday. <laughs> They'll be back after two. Now, I make a joke about it, but I saw something, I witnessed something amazing there at Quantu. There was this female lion just sitting down, relaxing. And then suddenly, a strange male lion entered the area. And the female lion was like... (gasps) 
And then she came back. Salekam, no, my husband's not here. He's gone to the Marcus. He... This is expensive seats here in the front, eh? <laughs> expensive seats. Mm, they know. This is the upper class Muslims of here. You know. <laughs> when they make you stinja, they only use Valpre. <laughs> but you know, New South Africa, you know, um, racism is still not over. Let's be honest, you know. We want things to change, but it'll take a long time, you know. Eugene Terre Blanche is out of jail. It was a good gesture. I don't know if you remember when he was released from jail. He was riding that black stallion. It was weird because he just got out of jail. <laughs> Probably more used to a black stallion riding him, you know. <laughs> and New South Africa, you have to deal with a clash of cultures. So very often, you know, people don't know how to deal with differences. So a lot of time, yeah, you know, I'm not racist, but. <laughs> and it's usually followed by the look around and the whisper. You know, I'm not racist, but these, um. <laughs> They're always mispronouncing our English words. They should just stick to speaking Exosa and Zulu <laughs> and Sifu and Dibli. Now, obviously, you know, there's prejudice against Muslims, prejudice against Muslims. We have to deal with it a lot of times. And it's difficult, especially on airports. I can't even listen to my Apple iPod on the airport. Anytime they see a Muslim with wires coming out, people get a bit nervous. <laughs> Muhammad at three o'clock, Muhammad at three o'clock. I think he saw me, I think he saw me. Airplane security going overboard. They don't even allow nail clippers on the plane, bro. Nail clippers. What are they scared a hijacker's going to do with a nail clipper? You're like, hello, hello? Is this the hostage negotiator? Listen up, you American dog pig camel maggot. <laughs> if my demands are not met, I will give one hostage a manicure every hour of the location. And I won't do a good job. <laughs> so what do you have to say to that? <laughs> Hello? Kunjani? <laughs> Hello? I think I've got the wrong number. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hello? I went to the UK. To the UK. Heathrow Airport. On Heathrow Airport, I was subjected to what they call a random check. <laughs> and I'm not sure it was so random, to be honest. I was there to do a comedy show. Random check. It was like, John Flissmus, welcome to London. Martin Jonas, welcome to London. Mark Banks, welcome to London. Read, but you want to step this way, please. <laughs> and I thought it was a joke because I was with a group of comedians. What do they think? I'm part of the comedic wing of Al Qaeda. <laughs> they took me into the back room, man. They examined me more thoroughly than I do as a doctor. Okay, I was like, brother, you might as well check my prostate while you're there. <laughs> What is this broke back mountain? I don't understand. <laughs> They're doing these things to us, brother. It's happening so often, certain people are dressing up like us on purpose. <laughs> Richard, why are you dressed like that? I'm going to the airport. <laughs> I hope they're like Hannah Puerts. <laughs> now, I make a whole joke about it, but obviously, you know, I was quite concerned because they can actually detain you without trial for having suspected links to Al Qaeda. And that word links is very scary because whenever I go to a Muslim wedding, I always meet people there who know how I am connected to everyone. You see, there's this unofficial Muslim intelligence network that operates out of weddings. 
They call the aunties. <laughs> and they know their connections, boy. Usama, yeah, he's Farid's connection. You know, Cookie Kala's husband's cousin, brother Rafiq Ali. Now, his second wife's sister is married to Yaakub Acha from Ladysmith. Now, Yaakub's brother Shabir used to work for Farid from Afghanistan, and Farid is Osama's second cousin's adopted son. <laughs> Osama bin Laden? No, Osama Tayyub, the chartered accountant. <laughs> He's got such light eyes, mashallah. I wanted him for my daughter, but you know those memons. <laughs> You thought I'm talking about Usama bin Laden? Don't be stupid, man. He's connected from the other side of the family. This is amazing, people. The British police aren't allowed to carry guns. You know the bobbies? They just have sticks and whistles. They aren't allowed to carry guns, but if they need a gun, they actually have to phone a special unit to bring them a gun. Can you imagine that? Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Could you put your gun down, please? <laughs> All right, so if you don't put your gun down, I'll use this. <laughs> Very well, you leave me no choice. Yeah, yeah, Phil, I've got someone here being a little silly. <laughs> Did you bring me a gun, please? <laughs> Thanks so much. All right, now when he gets that voice message, You're in big trouble, mister. <laughs> they blew up trains in London. Now the trains in London look like the trains in South Africa. Can you imagine a suicide bomber on one of our trains? Ah, actually, my work here is done. I can... <laughs> I'm actually happy the British police weren't allowed to carry guns. Last time they shot someone, they thought they were shooting Islamic militant. Turns out they shot a Brazilian electrician. How does a Brazilian electrician look like an Islamic militant? I mean, who looks at Ronaldo and goes, oh, Al-Qaeda? <laughs> Can you even imagine a Brazilian jihad rally? Death to the infidel! <laughs> ridiculous. Very ridiculous. Also, the America is as strange. Americans like naming the natural disasters. They call it Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Rita, Hurricane Wilma. You don't see other countries doing that. The Pakistanis never went, look out, it's earthquake prime. <laughs> but apparently there was a minor tremor a few days before the actual quakes in Pakistan. There was a minor tremor, but no one noticed. I mean, it's difficult to notice a minor tremor if everyone's walking around like... <laughs> Do you feel anything? No, I don't feel anything. <laughs> Everything is on the level. <laughs> I sometimes have nightmares that the Americans, they come after us. You turn on the TV, we're here with one of the first taken POWs in the U.S. led war on the Cape Flats. <laughs> Let's see what Abdalchi has to say. <laughs> now we are right, men. <laughs> we must just lambing at eight over here. I want to send a dedication to Fazana. <laughs> I smack you at a person. Thank you for those wise words, Abdolchi. Altaf Kazi, SABC, Kirtan. I'm from Cape Town, from Cape Town. And I think I watch too much TV. Like, I was watching National Geographic on TV the other day, and I was thinking to myself, what if aliens, no? Aliens have shows like National Geographic about us. You know, some green E.T. looking dude in a bush in a safari suit. And welcome to wildlife on the blue planet. My name is... It's an alien name. I almost don't know what alien names. 
We begin our journey in the jungles of the Cape Flats to examine the species indigenous to this area, the Cape so-called colored. <laughs> or Zait Africanus Capsus Yomas. <laughs> Here comes the bull of the species now. He walks as if one leg is shorter than the other. <laughs> and when he smiles, one wonders where the hell are his front teeth? A female has just entered the territory. The male wastes no time and his mating call range the air for all to exhale like a The female rejects his affections, so he retreats to the back of the BP garage for a school <laughs> You know who makes a lot of money on the Cape Flats? <laughs> Dentists. Are there any dentists here? Dentists? Any dentists? <laughs> dentists. Well, I hate dentists. <laughs> you know why? Because the dentist will paralyze half your face. <laughs> Stick his big fat fingers, cotton wool, and the sharpest instruments you've ever seen in your mouth, <laughs> and then still want to have a bloody conversation with you. <laughs> so, um, how's business? <sighs> Sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> Subtitle, your massa. <laughs> Who is asking you stupid questions? Ooh, was that painful? No. I usually go, ah, when I'm having fun. <laughs> That's how I express joy in my culture. And the skid marks that just appeared in my underpants is evidence of that ecstasy. Are you flossing? Are you flossing? Yeah, I'm wearing a G-string right now. What do you do? <coughs> my dad loves Cape Town so much, he wants the next Olympics to come to Cape Town. And I'm like, you, you can't have the Cape Flats Olympics. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Be like, on your marks. Good shot. That's a liquor pair of tackies. <laughs> what is that? Nikes? Give it here, give it here. <laughs> I say, rather have the Cape Flats Para Olympics. That'll work a bit better. I mean, even the normal guys, they look disabled. But you know, you can tell how confident white people are when you go to these sporting events. You can tell. Because you, know? you only get white streakers. <laughs> you know the people who get naked and then run across the field at sporting events? Those are only white people. You've never seen an Indian streaker. An Indian be waiting to streak like... <laughs> Salman, I'm going right. <laughs> Take that step, boss. Take that step. Fly like the wind, Lani. I'm through my acres. Alman, you wanna go? You wanna go? No, it's okay. I'll go. I'll go. I'll take that step, boss. Take that step. Fly like the wind, Lani. I'm through my acres. Alman, you think I must take off my clothes? But at least white people forgive each other. They do, you know? My white friends, they can have an argument after five minutes, they're apologizing. I'm so sorry, Sheila. I didn't mean to get upset. I know you burnt down my house, killed my dog, but it was an honest mistake. <laughs> Indian people keep grudges for 40 years. <laughs> and you know why? Who is she to say that my biryani is dry? We love our biryani, we love it. We can't leave the house without biryani. We're the only people you see carrying a huge stainless steel pot of biryani on the beach. <laughs> don't spill, don't spill. 
<laughs> Even setting up a place on the beach is not simple. Other people, they put their towels down, run in the water, finish. Some Indians erect low-cost housing. <laughs> There's 10 umbrellas strategically placed, towel sheets. I've seen RDP houses less sturdy than this. And there's always one uncle like this uncle over here that acts like the foreman. He does no work. He just orders all the children in the construction. Hey, why are you pulling your face like that? Because <laughs> I sent you to Mia's farm. <laughs> also, we're very fussy about foods. Taught to be fussy about foods from a very young age. I think if Indian babies could talk, they would complain about the mother's milk. <laughs> Be like, I didn't put more elachi. <laughs> but also we very respectful people, like we'll never smoke in front of elders. Doesn't matter how old you are, you will never smoke in front of an older person. Older people, on the other hand, are in denial that the young people smoke. You'll see this outside wedding reception halls all the time. A group of young adults standing outside smoking. The minute the older person comes out, they all have the same move. It's like... <laughs> Salaikum ma. You need anything? <laughs> what are you children doing out here? <laughs> There's smoke coming out of his backside at this point. <laughs> time. Nothing ma, we're just talking, we're just talking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, ma, the biryani was a bit spicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> I thought it was just me. <laughs> I must go make wuzu again. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Johannesburg, love Durban. You have interesting slang here. Like, I was with this friend of mine, Yitesh, and he was like, hey, that's a hot sound system, man. That's a mother of a sound system. <laughs> mother? What is it? No, it means a smart kid. It's a hot sound system. It's a mother of a sound system. <laughs> and it's a common word, because I was driving the other day, someone called me a mother chot. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Mother Chot. <laughs> but you know, we have different cultures. We don't know about each other's cultures. I'm reminded of this whenever I ask people if the food is halal. <laughs> like I was at a restaurant in Bloemfontein. <laughs> and I asked the brother, uh, is the course halal? Halal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I shall the course bring. I hope you don't have to eat it, 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 you don't have to eat it. Because I bought this computer from a guy at the Oriental Plaza in Joburg. Indian people can soup up anything. Okay, I actually don't think it's right for a computer mouse to have mags. I mean, the speaker system costs more than a whole computer. But you know the best thing about it, usually when you make a mistake on a computer, it goes, you have performed an illegal operation, this program will be shut down. <laughs> now my computer doesn't say that. Because you have performed an illegal operation, but don't worry, I know someone in government. <laughs> Biggest international uh, court case was the Michael Jackson court case. Michael Jackson court case. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but apparently Michael 
walked in front of that little child's whole family, butt naked. And they stayed in the house. I don't know about you, but if I saw a naked white black man <laughs> that looks like a woman with a dingaling, I'm jumping out of a freaking window. If I saw Michael, I'll be like, what are you? Wait, let me get my pencil. And then they said Michael was being intimidating. I don't understand how anyone who ends his sentences with hee hee can be intimidating. <laughs> I mean, I never heard Hannibal Lecter go, hello, Clarice. Hee hee. Oh, Hitler, Achtung, Scheiße. Hee hee. Went to Dubai. Dubai is very much like Michael Jackson's face. There's a lot of construction going on over there. Bloody hot in Dubai, 48 degrees. I saw a cop chasing the robber, and they were both walking. <laughs> Stop, thief! <laughs> You'll never take me alive! Also, shopping is crazy. If there's one thing that I've learned as a married man, right, is that women want shoes. And my wife is an Olympic level shoe shopper. I think, I actually don't think it's right for a person to stretch before they go to the mall. But something comes over, bro. It's like the Lord of the Rings. The minute she picks up the shoe, it's like, my precious. <laughs> Listen, Faz, I think that's a bit expensive. No. No, they're not your husbands. They want to talk to the front You confused there, Uncle, aren't you? Really? But men also have one track minds. I don't know if anybody saw the movie Tomb Raider. There's a scene in that movie where they show Angelina Jolie naked from the back at such an angle so that just a sliver of a breast is visible from the side. Now, I swear to you, when they showed this, every guy in that movie was like... <laughs> but all men want to be players. All men want to be Casanovas. But it's a new millennium, people. You get female players too. Female players! They're called sluts, but um... That's a terrible term, terrible term. I do not condone that term. I mean, why can't that term be used to describe guys as well? Because, I mean, James Bond is a slut. He's always mistreating women. I've seen Sean Connery go, You're a stunning beauty. But you don't know your place. Try stuff like that these days, be like, James, you can't speak to me like, Tch. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> Tybo the bitch, isn't it, James? <laughs> also, with all the sexually transmitted diseases out there, I'm not looking at you for any reason, which is just by the way. I'm sure James had to use some sort of protection. Maybe even being briefed by Q. And I'm like, Seven, please pay attention as I demonstrate the latest in contraceptive technology. It may seem like an ordinary condom to you, but install some rather interesting modifications. It's uh, completely armed with syphilis screen, built in by Agra, right in their front arm, KY jelly guns, rear bulletproof, gentle water, ejector seat, and free Jacob Zuma shower option for your protection. <laughs> But I feel sorry for Jacob Zuma, man. Feel sorry for him. I mean, what did he do? He did it without a condom. Maybe that's his extreme sport. <laughs> I mean, other people skydive, bungee jumps, he pumps without the helmet. What's the big deal? <laughs> I mean, our only thing after you skydive is like, woo, what a rush, man. He's like, woo, what a rush. <laughs> But 
But we need some positive news stories. That's what we need, positive news stories. The last time we had a positive news story was when we won the 2010 World Cup bid. All our hopes rested on this Jamaican guy, Jack Warner. I don't know if you remember. And they were scared he was going to vote for Morocco. Now, I wasn't scared, I mean, because the guy is Jamaican. And between Morocco and South Africa, who's got the best? <laughs> Be like, you're right. This is not bad. Or do you sneak it in here? Mbeki. Well, um, Madiba. Tabo, I can't believe you. Not to share it. But I think we need to use our individual talents to help the country. We need to do this, you know? Like there's a huge problem with adoption in South Africa. So I say you take the Indian businessmen and you put them in the adoption agencies. <laughs> sort out adoption. Could you imagine that? Hey boss, I see you looking to adopt. <laughs> and you come to the right place. If it's quality you want, it's quality we've got, man. Black, white, tall, short, fat, then we got them all, honey. Like this one here, boss. Pick him up, walk around, see how he feels. <laughs> hey, looks good on you, man. <laughs> You'll have someone to love, someone who loves you. But best of all, when he's about six or seven, you can make him work in a shop, get a return on your investment. <laughs> I watch a lot of like soapies for escapism from the harsh realities of life. I like watching The Bold and the Beautiful, but it should be called Bold and the Inbred, if you ask me. Because Brooke has had an affair with every single person on that show. I mean, first it was Thorn, then it was Ridge, then it was their father, Eric, with whom she had two children. But it turns out that Eric is actually her father, which means she had an affair with both of her stepbrothers and is her own daughter's stepsister. Then she had an affair with the daughter's husband, Deacon. Then she married a stepbrother who was also at one time a stepson, Ridge. Thus becoming her own father's daughter-in-law and her own daughter's sister-in-law. There's a chance she may have actually given birth to herself. <laughs> you don't know. And with all this inbreeding, how do the kids get to be so good looking? Because I've been to the bluff and it's not... on the roads. A lot of traffic on the roads because there's construction. Don't you hate it in the mornings when you're switching between lanes to try and find the fastest lane? Don't you hate it when you switch into the next lane because you think in your mind that lane is going to be faster. But when, when you do, the lane stops. <laughs> and the guy who was behind you in the other lane is now driving past. <laughs> so I got me one of these satellite navigation systems. You know the ones that go, turn right in five meters. But it broke down, man. And I had to have it repaired in Grossi Park, in Cape Town. It's different now. Now I ask for directions and it's like, you see my bro, turn right over here, man. <laughs> Sorry, man, I meant your other right, your other right. Uh, turn around, okay, go straight, go straight. Yes, man, go straight, it's all right, man. Now I almost don't recognize this place over here. Can I maybe use your phone or something? <laughs> Don't have any time, brother. <laughs> also, I was hijacked a couple of years back. But I was hijacked by a squint guy. <laughs> Skilbra. Squint guy hijacked me. And I think I upset him because at first, I didn't even know he was trying to hijack me. <laughs> I was like, oh, dude behind me is getting jacked. <laughs> he was pissed off, man. He just took my bloody bicycle. <laughs> then he made me hostage. He put me on the handlebars of the bicycle again. <laughs> We're driving around. And we got to talking, and it turns out that when he was born, he was born with no eyelid. 
So when they circumcised him, <laughs> they used the skin to build him a new one. It's a nice cockeyed. <laughs> but he's also got foresight. Went to Swaziland, you know you're on a small plane, on a tiny plane. Went to Swaziland on a tiny plane. You know you're on a small plane when you look outside and there's a bird overtaking you. <laughs> and I hate turbulence on these airplanes. That's the worst thing for me. Because the flight attendants are always calm on the planes. They're calm. <laughs> I'm like, at what point do the flight attendants get scared themselves? Or are they trained to be calm right till the end? I mean, the plane is falling out of the sky and they're like, Ladies and gentlemen, we have commenced our descent. <laughs> and we'll be touching down a little sooner than expected. Good news though, this is now a smoking flight. <laughs> the wing is on fire, so we don't see any harm in you lighting up. We'll be touching down in a sort of vertical direction, and the temperature on the ground is optional. How hot is fire? It'll be that hot. So for those of you going to heaven, please enjoy the angels and the harps. And for those of you going to hell, we look forward to seeing you on Nationwide Air very soon. Went to India, also India. They got like these huge bugs in India. Not like here, it's like, ooh. There's like, ooh. <laughs> 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 You can actually hear them walking around. <laughs> Wake up in the morning, the traveler's checks are gone. I'm a... I tried to swat the mosquito once, it was like <laughs> I give you malaria, my friend. <laughs> but Bollywood is taking over people, taking over. We have to get on the bandwagon, the white people here. Get up with the culture. You know, because taking over is going to be the biggest economy by the year 2050, I think. And it's already starting because they even wanted Ashwarya Rai, very famous Bollywood actress for the couple of people who don't know. They wanted her to be the new James Bond girl. And I say it's just a matter of time before James Bond himself is going, <laughs> Amitabh Sharu, Ritik Bond. <laughs> Double or seven. <laughs> but for you, 699. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine the opening music to that movie? to my show. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Drive safe. Lovely. Wonderful. Brilliant show. Brilliant. My nose is running in my head. <laughs> he was laughing so hard his nose started running. Nice, uh, cool. Uh, perfect, 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 perfect. Pick up. Excellent. Fantastic. It was a marvelous show, yes. So definitely recommend it to anyone who's going to come and watch it. Eh? It was great. Really liked it. Riyad Musa. Riyad Musa. Riyad. Yes. Musa. Absolutely fantastic. Great show. That's a flashback to the origin of the Western Cape, man. Oh, no, it is yes. happening. Yes. I was in the front row.